Well, welcome to another video. Here we go. 285 miles on the uh, sat nav. Uh, three lower rods, sleeping bag, some coffee, and a boatload of lures. <laughs> hey. We've got a uh, heading to the Isle of Skye. Been doing loads of research, looking through uh, Ordnance Survey and Navionics and things try and find new marks and I've got what I think is an absolute peach of a mark. It is reasonably, I'm not going to say dangerous, but there's, uh, there's a very, very high chance of getting cut off. It's later than I wanted to get up, that's what time it is. It's uh, one and a half degrees outside and I can imagine the wind chill is going to be pretty, pretty high. Morning sheep. So I'm going to stop yabbering, drive down the hill um, to where the, uh, the car park is for, or the point where I'm going to try and park my car is for the walk in and then uh, maybe get a coffee on. Aside from getting out of my sleeping bag, the second hurdle of the day is the bit where I wanted to park. Um, looks like, I've seen it used as a parking spot in the summer, but it looks like the farmers are using it as a winter winter feed area for his sheep. I don't really want to annoy the farmer. Uh. So it's 10 past nine. Low water, like I said, is at about half one. Yeah, might only get a couple of hours either side of low tide at this point. Ideally, when you're pollock fishing or rock fishing, you want a, you know, a rocky platform that juts out into the sea. As you can see, this whole coastline is pretty much big boulders. But because it's such a low tide, and the water is so deep, there's a massive, I think, I measured out on Navianux that if I cast 30 metres from the low water mark, then I was hitting 25 metres of water, of depth, which is, which is pretty deep from the shore. Normally I would disregard it, but because we've got that really big low tide, I think it's a 0 0.9 metre or so. So that's anyway, that's why I came here, plus the wind direction. I mean, you can see this cliff is going to, uh, it offers a fair bit of protection. The only problem is getting along there and getting back before the tide comes back in. We're going to pick our way along. I'll keep an eye on the watch, um, make sure I make some notes of time and um, hopefully we can get, find that deep water in the big fish. You are so loose and slippery. Do have studs on my shoes. Studs are only good if I've got something to bite into. This rock doesn't have much fe many features on it. Oh, I think we might be able to get across, you know. Oh, timer we're on. It's 20 past nine, so three hours after high water and three hours before low water. So we've got three hours either side of low tide. Well, it looks like I spoke too soon about the pinch point. Oh, that is like so... Oh, sorry rods.
Please, can I get down? Oh, feck. Whoops. Yeah, so I need to amend my timing. Um, obviously, there's a pinch point here. It's making us a bit nervous sitting under this big cliff with a uh, rock fall. I would never know if something fell on us. Yeah, I can get down. Obviously, I could just get wet feet on the way back, but I really didn't want to get wet feet for the rest of the day since it's so cold. It's a bit awkward with my bag. Put that there. Hey, we're down. Oh, really got cold on the way uh, standing around there. Oh, that's really deep as well. I'm just watching the waves here. This wind's pushing a more of a swell on shore. But I might be able to get down onto this. These are going to be slippery as slippy stuff. And hop onto there, onto there, onto there. And then away we'll go. I'm just a little bit anxious about how slippery that rock is. Hands are freezing. Well, it wouldn't be fun if it was easy. Yes! Get in! Oop. Well, look where we are. We made it. Oh, it's looking good. There's loads of loose rock all the way around there, recent falls, so I'm trying to stay far away from the cliff as I can. Um, that looked good on that point there, but there's a load of structure in front of it. Uh, same with this here. So I think I'm going to try off this rock here. Two current lines coming straight in here. It looks amazing. As you can probably tell, I'm quite excited. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this. I think by my calculations, I can stay here for another two and a half hours after low water without getting wet feet. Which I don't necessarily want to do because I've got another two days and I'm in the car so can't really dry anything out. But I will if I have to. Right, I brought two rods with me today. I've got the uh, Sentry Graphex Lure Rod, uh, 9 foot 6, casts up to 40 grams, which I want to use for extra distance or casting a long way if needed. Um, and then I also brought uh, the Tailwalk High Tide SSD, 8 foot 3, uh, which casts up to 50 grams, so shorter, uh, but it's what I caught my uh, 14 pound pollock on, 14, 13 pound 13 ounces pollock on. 
Uh, I've only brought one reel, which is a Daiwa BG, uh, BGMQ 2500 size with 20 pound braid on. Oh, I can see there's a big bit of structure in front of us here, but uh, we'll worry about that if we hook into a fish. First cast. The 40 grams then on it. Got my trebles, drag lock down. So I'm using the metal just really to plumb the uh, the area, you get distance with it, you can fish it quite quickly, so just trying to find out where the structure is, which way the current's going. Um, and uh, where the depth is, and hopefully catch a fish in the meantime. So I'll just fan my casts out, like that. Oh, it's a load of structure just to the right there. Thought there were bites, but I think it's actually uh, my lure clip and weed. That's miles out as well, and it's not very deep. Damn. Oh yeah, it's all it's all big boulders like I've just like I've just walked over. Oh, I think this is a goner, this one. So I've just tied on another lure, gone for the same one again. Just had a quick uh, look on Navionics as well. And <laughs> I need to be further around the corner to get to the deepest water. The only problem with that is it doesn't really look particularly passable with the time that I've got. It would be quite handy because the wind would be more on my back instead of coming across. You can see over there, right at the far end, there's actually, uh, it doesn't look like there's any wind at all on the shoreline, but we're here now. So I'm gonna have a few more casts here. And if not, then I'm gonna head over to the point where I said I wasn't going to fish because there's structure in front. That seems to be closer to the deeper water. Um, there's a couple of cormorants fishing there as well. Uh, it will be windier, so. A lack of metals is my only kind of concern with it because they're really good at punching into the wind but I've only got a couple left so um, yeah and it is windy I mean it's meant to be I think gusting 20 but this feels a little stronger but fishing It's only a little in. Oh, away from the structure. Ah, oh, that's what I was worried about. Ah, oh. so there's fish here. It's just hard to land them. Hey, <laughs> that way. -ish. No, don't dive into me line. So the problem I've got, and I knew this would be the case, but I'm ho I was hoping I could get to the edge of the boulders really, but it's quite a plateau. At the edge of the plateau, oh, it just drops off in a really deep water. Like, I think it hits 20 meters within 30 meters distance, which is pretty good going. The problem is I'm casting almost to the deep water and then hitting the edge. And then I'm fishing across the top of all these boulders. No matter how high I bring my lure in the water, or I think I do, this is happening. Well, I've tied another leader on. I've upped that now to uh, to 30 pounds. It's Berkeley big game. Trilene big game, 100% fluorocarbon. Seems really, really stiff. But uh, hopefully it'll help mitigate the tackle loss since I'm running low on Zens and we're gonna move but well, we are moving <laughs> Oh, 
much further out this time. Oh, it's The wind's so strong that me blooming 40 gram lures just skipping across the surface. Don't you love fishing in Scotland? You're not coming off. There's also a seal here over the structure. <laughs> Prime sky pollock, eh? Whoa, 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 there's a treble there, man. First fish. Not what we're after. Well, I'm after a fish. But, uh, yeah. Do you know what actually stuff it? It feels really good to have caught a fish. There's another one right at range. Oh, it's bigger this one. I'm not raising me rod, I'm playing the fish because these trebles seem to fall out. Well, here we go, here's another one. It's a bit bigger. Nah, same size. Come on, son, down you go. I'm only getting the bites at range. I can only manage that in between the gusts of wind. Not getting anything closer. Feels deeper here. I might I might go for a soft plastic for a crow. Or I might just cut my losses and find somewhere with the wind on my back. Feels better. Oh yes. Out of the structure. I'll be screwed if I pick up a big fish here. through the kelp. See? Oh. You see where that line is right in the kelp? Got a feeling it's transferred is I can't feel it. Feel it. Oh no, there we go. <laughs> Just can't get it over this ledge. Give it some slack. I can obviously still pull down, but And take it, there we go. Some more, go on. Oh, there we is, there he is. Oh, I can see the top of me leader. There's the fish as well. Go on, swim away. You 
can see the fish just lolling around like weed. Oh. Well matey, for a little fella, you put up a bit of a good, better scrap. There we go. Biggest of the trip so far. Well, we've had a few fish. Whew. Not the uh, not the stamp that I'm after. I thought if we were going to get them, well, I say that it's not the stamp that I'm after. I'm out fishing. I've caught some fish, so I'm I am happy with that. But for some reason, uh, I don't know. Just had this feeling that if we did get one, it'd be a good one. And uh, we seem to be getting them every cast now, which is good. I found where they are. The only thing is, obviously, as you've just seen, is landing them. It's, uh, it's pretty tricky. So, and this wind is it's pretty cold. I think what I might do is go to the fallback mark and uh, try it there. It looks like it's out of the wind and it's deep water. Not this. Well, this is deep as well, actually, but um, yeah, it looks like it might be easy to land the fish. Well, as you can see, we've relocated. Come all the way back around the bay uh, to this other spot, uh, which was, I said at the beginning of the video, was the fallback mark. And uh, the wind's a lot better here. Um, it has started to rain a bit heavier though. But the, uh, the amount of current rushing past here and it looks deep, deep, deep. So I'm going to start chucking the metal and then maybe move on to a soft plastic, see what happens. The tide's coming in now, so obviously I'm on a bit of a wave cut platform here, so, and there's some, well, not big rollers, but there's some uh, waves coming in, so at some point we'll get chased off here, but hopefully not for another hour or so. Oh, that is deep. Feels really clean. When I first arrived, the current was absolutely hooning along. But now it uh, just seems to have stopped. Can't seem to get to the bottom. Oh, there we go. Yeah, it's pretty clean. I didn't even snag on anything there. Oh, something just had a go at that on the drop. It's a long drop. <laughs> if only this platform and depth of water was over on that headland. Oh, I've got a fish. Just got off. Quick little shake of the head. I think that was a, probably a coolie. Micro Pollock. It's 
handy when the wee ones do that. Not so much the bigger ones though. So here we go. There's a Z-Man Crow. It's called a Turbo Crow. It's a smaller version. They do do a bigger one with uh, bigger claws. Which the idea of this is that uh, the 35 gram lead sits on the bottom, and because these float, they'll sit up like that, and uh, hopefully entice fish to come and, and grab them from the uh, from the bottom. I've had some good results with these in the past, so uh, although maybe not over such clean ground, but we'll see. Which way to go? Let's try that one. <laughs> so there are snags out there. just picked up a fish right at the edge. It's literally just retrieving that. Go on, oh, out of there. Uh, that's a 4 wide gape hook. So I'm assuming it's transferred us. It's not pulling or anything. Damn it! I felt like it was well a better fish than the last one anyway. Oh. It's been over a ledge there. It just snapped me. Uh, you braid a few feet from the uh, the shore. So I've retied my leader and put on oh, <laughs> a lazy lures uh, bomb squad lure, 20 gram in a sand eel colour. There's a big ledge down there. Oh, he totally engulfed that. That's five inches. This feels better. Oh, on that ledge again. Uh. Well, I kept my leader, so I'm just tied on my metal again. Time's, uh, time's running out. I feel like some food. Possibly a pint. First cast for the metal. It's turned on the power a bit there. Get away from that ledge. Well, they all go for it. Oh, what? So close to the shore as well. Look at that, he took us into the ledge. Sorry, buddy.
Well, that's going to be my last cast. I'm going to call it a day and uh, make the, uh, the trek out. I've had a really good day, really enjoyed it. I've been uh, researching this area for ages, especially over there. Um, and I got really excited by it, so I had to come and give it a go. I know there's people watching this, and no doubt I'll say it in the comments as well. You're on Sky and you're not at East Point. Well, yeah, there's a lot of coastline at Sky. And uh, just going to the same mark every time doesn't, doesn't really float my boat. I know you catch a lot of fish there, but you never know. Might have caught even bigger and a lot more fish over there. There still might, and uh, when, I oh, when I come back next time, but uh, I seem to have found the nursery at this mark. <laughs> it's fun on the LRF kit. So I'm gonna finish winding this in. Then I'm gonna, yeah, get to the car and go and find somewhere to eat some food because I'm quite hungry and possibly watch the rugby as well. So really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give us a thumbs up and uh, leave a comment. Don't you dare go on that ledge. Leave a comment and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Uh, and if you haven't already subscribed, that would be great. And um, as always, until the next one, tight lines. Did I say rugby? I meant football. <laughs>